Right, so after this video, you'll never write a query in Tanstack Query a different way than I'm going to show you today. This is a very scalable, very efficient, very maintainable, and frankly, I think it's the only way to write queries in Tanstack Query that's the proper way, so you don't bust your project up in the, the coming three months. I've... I've had to make this video because there's lots and lots of articles, blogs, and videos about React Query or Tanstack Query, and there's no one actually explaining how to use, how to properly write these queries. Everyone is just going over the functionality. So every example, this is the documentation, I'll talk about the documentation, but every example just shows this as the basic example. And we're going to change this into something that's very very easy to use and something that won't cause you trouble in the coming months. Now, I've got, uh, I found an API for countries and we're going to use this API to, to actually write a query that's properly organized. Now, before we do that, I've created a Vite project. It has Axios as its dependency and the, of course, that's that query. Now, we need to actually write the queries in a, let's say, quote unquote, bad way first, so that I can show you the difference. So we have this components folder here, and I'm going to create a component that's called, let's say, countries. So I'm going to name it in countries. If I can spell this countries, yeah, I think it's spelled correctly. And let's create a component called countries. And we're going to use this to write the actual component that's going to be fetching the country data and then displaying the data. You know how it goes. Now, let's write the query in uh, the standard, quote unquote, standard way. So let's initialize this. We're going to say const countries and we're going to say use query. We're going to give it a query key that's going to be countries, let's say. And we have to have a query function. And that query function is going to be an async function that says await axios.get. And let's call this, let's place this URL of the API. Now we have the hook here. And now let's actually write the data. And we're going to use object destructuring here. So I'm going to say data, that's countries. Response, we're going to say is loading, and we're going to say is error. Okay, and let's handle all of these, these conditionals. We're going to say return. If it's loading, we're going to say loading. If it's an error, we're going to say, well, an error occurred. Something, something bad, bad happened. If I can spell it today, it happened. Something occurred. It's, why is it easier for me to spell occurred? Okay, and if there is no country's response, then we can just say there's no data. And now, once we covered all the negatives, we can continue on. So we don't have an if hell, and we have 50 indents for something. And now we know we have the data, and we can say countries. We can actually destructure this. So I can say country const. From this response, we can just extract data and call it countries with a lowercase c. And let's just map over the, these countries. And let's say there's a country, and we're going to just display the first 10. So if index is higher than 10, we can say return null. But if it's not, we actually have to return the country. So let's say country dot name dot common i think you see there's a name there is common and we can also return i think a country flag and let's also maybe do that that sounds that sounds actually nice so we can return this p tag close the tag open this up and okay thank you now we have the flag and the PNG, it's under flags. So I'm going to say image source is going to be 
the country dot flag dot png and let's give it an alt which is going to be country let's give it a country name so it's going to be if i can get these brackets and naming to tonight so country dot name dot common and we can interpolate this and we can say black okay let's go back to our page nothing's happening uh yes we should add it here so we're gonna add we're gonna add the component countries there you go i have no idea why the flag is not being displayed but that's not the problem right now uh, we have to add a key here i'm gonna say key and we're gonna say country and there should be an id somewhere here I see it's country dot flag that should be unique and we have to access the flags here so we go back and there we go we have we have the countries which is nice now let's say that this is the component we want and let's say now that we have another component let's just add any here so that the, the linter stops complaining and yeah no one wants any in their code base okay i understand so we want to add another component that's let's say that needs to use countries again okay so we're gonna say maybe you want you need to call this api to put this inside a switch statement right or the switch component so i'm gonna say countries countries select okay we're gonna say typescript tsx default function countries select i'm gonna say return div select the country and we now have to get all of these countries again so since we are engineers we will not be doing this again this is horrible this is this is this is horrible never do this we don't copy code we write the code once in a smart way so we're gonna we're not gonna be doing this you can also do this but but don't now since we have to reuse these countries here we have to do something about this and that's where we will change how we write the hooks so the first thing that we have to do here is create some additional folders here for our structure and inside the source component we can create a folder that's called types because we need types let's say types not inside the components types.index.ts we need types we need constants and we need hooks so we need these three directories here i know it's a lot at the beginning don't worry once you write this once everything's going to be smooth so we have to move this hook inside of the hooks directory and we have to reuse it so what's going to happen is we're going to go to the hooks directory and let's say let's say we're going to say export but again for your use case let's say we're gonna we're gonna have use countries dot ts and we're going to go to the use countries ts we're going to say export const use countries and now since we have this function we can move all of this so we can move the use query here now you see that there's still stuff missing here and that's the type the the actual way to get the data the request calling and the constant and that's where all these other directories or folders come into play so we're gonna have to get the types here so we're going to say country dot ts and what we use is here so we're going to say export default i just export interface country and let's just copy the important thing so we're going to say name and it's going to be common string i think this is going to be yes this works and now we need the flag that's also a string and we need 
flags. That's an object that has PNG and it's a string. Okay, so we added the type for our country. We're gonna export this. We're gonna export export this type so that we can use it. Now, once we add the type, we have to add a constant. And we can just add the constant here. It's not that important. We can say export const country query key. Let's say countries. So we can change this and we just have to add the request. We have to add a directory. Well, I like to add a directory. It's called services. And inside of here, we can say countries.ts. And let's just write the file. So we're going to say export default function get countries. And inside of here, this is just a basic function for getting the data. So we say data. That's equal to, let's copy this over. And this is, of course, an async function. We have to wait this. And we have to return the data. Let's import Axios. And in order for us to have the actual types, we have to return a type here. And we are returning a promise that's country. And it's an array of countries. So we have multiple countries coming in. Now, once we wrote this function, again, we're going to have to export this in the countries. And when we can close all of this unnecessary files that we opened, and let's go through them again. We have the constants directory that keeps the queries key consistent. Because if you write the query key like this, you're going to have a typo. And when you have to invalidate the query, for example, like in, ex in the example here, you can spell this wrong. And then you're going to break your head next couple of days thinking what's going on, what's happening, until you see that there is to do with a D instead of S. That's why you put this, that's why you create a constant for this. The next thing is we want to have this separated. So we want to have this in a separate file. You don't need to actually create services and so on. You can also put the constant here. So we're going to say const countries query key, and then just give it the query key and then use it here. I like to do this since I'm I think I will need to use this in the future in other files. The, the, for example, the constant or to call the countries. I shouldn't in most cases, but it's good to have. And now you export the countries, the constant. You create a type, country. You export the type to. You create the service. You export the service. And you create the hook and you export the hook too. And now we have to replace this. So I'm going to say country query key. And we have to import the React query. And we're not going to be using the axios here. The one line that we wrote. We're going to use the, the service here that we wrote. So we're going to call, we're going to say get countries. And let's import this. And there you go. This is clean. This is very clean. Very clean. And you know what's happening. We have the API call. We have the constant. And we have the use query hook. Now you can add everything else that you have. The React query actually provides to you. Enabled. We can say keep previous data. We can say refetch on mount on reconnect and so on. And now we can go back to our countries component. And instead of all this that we can't reuse, that we have to write every time, that's error prone, and that's not so good, we can just replace with a simple use countries hook. You can save this, and there you go. You have the hook, you have the data. I'm going to say countries here. You can replace this. Since we are now getting the data instead of the entire request, you have the data and you have all the types. So I'm going to say error. I'm going to say is fetched. It's working. I'm going to say, I don't know, what else would you want? I can also get the error. 
the actual error that's going to happen if it triggers. And now this is way, way cleaner. And also the best thing is that you have type support now. So as you can see, if I hover over, there's a country type and I can say country.flag, country.flags.png. And this, this becomes from something that's horrible into a beautiful file. And let's say that we need to use the countries here for that select that we have. It's, it's literally this easy. You have the countries that you need. It's, it's this easy. You have to import count tires. I, I'm sorry for <laughs> misspelling this. But you have to import the use countries hook. Can I refactor this globally? I think I can. Use countries. Never mind. You can import the hook and you have all the data. So you can one line the entire logic and you can place this and this logic can be behind here. So you can do the select if you want to return something else and watch this. You can say data and this data that's returned, if for all you that don't know this is a, you can manipulate what's being returned from the query. And you can say return data and you can change whatever you want. But this data is actually the type of country. So you can access whatever you need inside of it. And after you start writing the hooks this way, everything is going to change because you won't need to have that error prone gibberish at the top of your code every time. It's going to be one line and it's going to be very, very usable. So that's how you properly write queries in TanStack Query.